The 2013 financial scandal, infamously known as Cashgate, where 24 billion kwacha of Malawi's public resources could not be accounted for, has had a long-lasting impact on the country's economy. Traditional development partners have withdrawn their direct budget support, creating challenges for the government in balancing up resources and expenditure. To mitigate these effects, the government of Malawi received a grant of 26.68 million United States dollars from the African Development Bank, ADB, through the Protection of Basic Services Program to help sustain delivery of basic services and improving value for money through strengthened accountability in the social sector. Education and health are key sectors in the country and the program targeted investments in the health care and education. It had to contribute to government's objective of expanding access and improving the quality of basic services by ensuring adequate staffing and operations in health services, increased availability of drugs in health facilities, learning and teaching materials in secondary schools. Through this program, the Ministry of Health has made important investments in healthcare with the procurement of important medical equipment to health facilities, including rural health centers. 46 health facilities, mostly rural and district hospitals, have received this important equipment. This equipment has helped the government health facilities scale up services and reach out to more patients. There are a few components that uh, were touched by uh, the support we got from African Development Bank. Uh, the three major areas uh, where we were supported were on medical equipment, uh, uh, secondly on service labour agreements uh, to Christian Health Association of Malawi. You would you'll want to know that uh, in Malawi, Healthcare is provided uh, by three arms. The public sector is about 70%. Uh, the Christian Health Association, close to 30%. And a little bit by pr the private sector. So, indeed, 30% uh, of our population in hard to reach areas are uh, served by the Christian Health uh, Association of Malawi. And that's where the resource, some of the resources of the African Development Bank uh, went to remote, hard-to-reach areas. So when you go to a health centre, you should be able to test for malaria. When you're in the community, you should be able to have a test, malaria test, confirm a test before you administer drugs. So the test kits were provided for by the African Development Bank. Let me mention that uh, the last thing that you want to do in health is to push your people to pay out of pocket. People need to be insured. So the service level agreement that we have with CHAM may be synonymous to providing insurance to our people. That when they go uh, in facilities in, uh, in the rural areas, hard to reach uh, people that may not have ready cash at any, at any point in time, they are able to access uh, care, especially children and uh, pregnant women or women in the reproductive age. Uh, and so if 30% of your population is able to access uh, that care for free, uh, then it's a huge milestone uh, and it's a huge, huge contribution to economic development. I think there are a few aspects that you look at uh, the spectrum of uh, equipment that was bought uh, or procured under this, uh, this initiative. Uh, the one thing that a healthcare worker gets frustrated with is not to have tools. When you look at the type of equipment that we had or we bought or procured, uh, also brought dignity to our people. Uh, most of our people in the facilities, for example, do not have beds. Uh, so if you've got a mother, a child who's sick, but they have to sleep on the floor, uh, healing is impaired, dignity is compromised, infection prevention is compromised. So 
facilities like those really bring dignity. But let me also mention further that in health, we also value the dead. Uh, so part of the uh, pieces of equipment that we bought were courtrooms. Um, range is quite enormous from X-ray units, ultrasound scan machines. In fact, we're able to provide ultrasound scan machines to more than 18 of our facilities. Huge milestone. Mitundu Rural Hospital is one of the facilities that have been provided with this modern equipment. The hospital covers a population of 400,000 people but had no major medical equipment. For the last seven years, the facility has had no X ray machine as the old one got damaged. The absence of such machines was prompting hospital authorities to be sending patients to Bwaila District Hospital or Kamonzo Central Hospital. This has been draining government resources through fuel and motor vehicle maintenance expenses. Through the program, the hospital has received an X-ray machine, an ultrasound scanning machine, dental machine, hospital beds and mortuary coolers. In the absence of X-ray, it's not because we patient don't to We have to send a patient to the Lack of medical equipment is one of the problems in healthcare provision in Malawi. The coming of various equipment boosts government's efforts in improving healthcare in the country. John Corsa a radiographer at Zomba Central Hospital, which is one of the facilities where equipment has been provided under the program, explains how lack of modern and functional medical equipment affects service delivery. Before we received this machine, we had lots of problems, like we had an increase in workflow, because we had only, by that time, we had two machines working, but the other machine was a 41. So the 41, we couldn't do much. Sometimes we, we have breakdowns with it. The other one, in terms of functional, functionality, it had, it had few functions. But with the coming of this machine, the Mingre one, it's a good machine because it has got a lot of functions. Like for cardiac echo, we are able to take color flows. So this one, we can scan the heart. We can do DVTs with it. While the old ones, we are having difficult to do out those problems. Access to good health services is also another area the program has been addressing. It is estimated that 3.1 million people do not live within 8 kilometers to the nearest government health facility, providing full essential health package services which are free at the point of delivery. Through the protection of basic services program, the government of Malawi has been ensuring that communities that are not near government health facilities get assisted in Christian Health Association of Malawi CHAM hospitals. The Ministry of Health signed a service level agreement with CHAM to provide health services in remote areas that are hard to reach and far from government health facility. This has ensured that those far away from government health facilities are still within the 8-kilometer radius to the next health facility. Ekwendeni Mission Hospital in Zimba is one of the facilities where rural and vulnerable people are accessing medical care for free through this agreement. The service level agreement started some time back with Ekwendeni Mission Hospital 
and the government has been supporting mostly on the demand side. If I say on the demand side, we are looking at what we incur uh, with the patient as they come to the hospital. So it's like transportation, if there was need for ambulance to go and pick uh, the patient, and also medication that we are providing to the patient. So those are the areas that are mostly involved and also because initially the government has been paying the staff at Ikwendeni Hospital, so that continues. So that was what has been on the service level agreement with the government since it started. What we're seeing is that more patients are accessing the services from our hospitals. So that would be a success because we would want the patients to come from the villages and access the health care from the hospitals rather than going to the traditional healers. So that would be the most success. It's on the demand side. This is one way of ensuring that universal coverage of health services is achieved. A total of 1.3 billion kwata, an estimation of 1.8 million US dollars, has been spent on 110 private health facilities under the agreement, and this has improved primary health care access to the poor and vulnerable. <coughs> Education remains one of the key priority areas of the government of Malawi. Through this program, the government has supported community day secondary schools with laboratory equipment to encourage and improve science learning in these schools. Unlike conventional schools, most community day secondary schools have serious problems ranging from lack of learning materials to inadequate number of teachers. The equipment that we bought we had uh, two movable uh, tables, uh, and again we had uh, we were just calling them science units. In each unit, we are having all the equipment, all the chemicals that a teacher could carry out an experiment in biology, uh, physics, and uh, chemistry. So, using the funds, we bought uh, three hundred and eighty units. This is 380 units, it means we targeted again uh, 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 380 CDSSs. So the first priority was given to CDSSs because uh, these are the areas where we uh, saw that there was really a greater need. Most learners in these schools sit for their secondary examinations without any knowledge of the laboratory equipment. This is because in their schools, the learners do not have the required laboratory equipment. Through the protection of basic services program, all community day secondary schools in Malawi now have laboratory equipment. This has increased the interest that learners have in sciences. You may wish to know that uh, students, just as well as uh, teachers, were not able to carry out the uh, experiments. Even the simple experiments, which perhaps any school could have done, but uh, as for our school, we were unable because of lack of such uh, science equipment. Students were not able to compete with their fellow students from other schools in terms of uh, uh, science subjects. Uh, because as a school we had no such materials and therefore we only relied on the books but not on the actual experiments. However, you may wish to note that during like MAC exams there are practical uh, examinations and so our students lacked that in-depth knowledge as to how to conduct or answer practical uh, questions. Njewa Community Day Secondary School in Lilongwe is one of the schools that have seen an increase in student participation in sciences. We have greatly benefited from the movable labs. Firstly, the teachers are able to deliver 
at first it was like all of teaching, but now it's like hands-on with the use of the lab. Secondly, it has been a motivation to our students. Our students are able to go into the lab and make use of the mobile labs. Even the performance has greatly improved. In the past, our students could not score distinctions at MSCE in some subjects. But this year, they have managed to score distinctions in some subjects because they were able to make use of these things. For example, we have students that score uh, several distinctions in some subjects and they have been selected to go to university. For the learners, there is more encouragement and hope for them to compete with learners in other schools. This labota is very important to us as students because during past years we were not able to have access of this apparatus and other chemicals so learning was a bit difficult during that time. But nowadays we can conduct any experiment because of the available of the apparatus and chemicals. Apart from the laboratory equipment, government has also provided textbooks to all secondary schools in Malawi, reducing the student book ratio from 1 to 65 to 1 to 25 now. This was in support to the new secondary school science curriculum. Lack of books in the community day secondary schools has been a major challenge in delivering lessons for learners, with some schools having just one book per subject for a whole school. The books procured under this project have eased this problem, as testified by one of the head teachers. At first, we did not have enough textbooks. It was very difficult for a teacher to teach in the classrooms. For instance, uh, in a certain subject, we had a scenario whereby uh, we had to teach uh, 50 students using two textbooks. But with the coming of the new books, at least three quarters of the students, they have the books. So they are able to read in the library, the makeshift library that we have. In the past, we did not have any makeshift library because we had no books to display in the library. For the ministry, it is envisaged that science teaching and learning will improve and this will lead to having more learners opting for science subjects. We made a priority to buy uh, textbooks. Now because they, uh, the curriculum itself was being rolled out form by form. In 2014 it was the only form one and then 2015 form two. So in 2014, when the resources were there, we said, let us say, uh, buy books, because there was no even a single text that we were supposed to use in the rolling out of the new curriculum. So what we did was uh, to buy uh, textbooks. And in history, uh, that was the first time that we bought uh, books more than uh, one million using uh, the funds that we got from uh, ADB. And uh, again, because uh, our curriculum is uh, science-based, uh, there was again a need to buy uh, science uh, materials. So what we did was just to give a priority to three uh, subjects. That's uh, biology, uh, physics, and chemistry. It is hoped that in the coming years, the country will have more learners taking up science subjects as they now have the laboratory equipment to help them learn these subjects. The libraries will also help them achieve better results as they can now easily access the information they require. For most community day secondary schools, however, there is still need to construct rooms to house the laboratory equipment and libraries as they already have challenges of inadequate classrooms for their learners.